I framed two issues. The first issue is whether the petitioner who was arrested could have been handcuffed and if so, under what circumstances? And if there is any violation by the arresting officer, would the petitioner be entitled for compensation? And if so, to what amount? Relying upon Sunil Batra, then Prem Shankar Sukla, and then citizens of India, I've come to the observation. This court have peru duly perused the case records of GR case number so and so, wherein in the orders there is no reflection that any permission was taken from the magistrate, or for that matter, the magistrate was duly informed about the reasons for putting iron fetters upon the petitioner. This court also finds it relevant to take note of that though opportunity was given to the state respondents to produce the case diary, which as per law was required to be prepared in triplicate, but not a single copy of the case diary was produced for the reasons already recorded in the order dated 9 11 2023. Therefore, as it was the burden upon the custodian of the detainee to explain the reasons why the petitioner was handcuffed and the apparent failure on the part of the respondents to show the reasons that too, when the petitioner himself surrendered clearly shows the respondent authorities and more particularly in the investing officer had acted contrary to the law declared by the Supreme Court in the three judgments referred to herein above. In that view of the matter, the first issue therefore is decided that the respondent authorities and more particularly the investigating officer on the fact of the case ought not to have handcuffed the petitioner. And such action was contrary to the law declared by the Supreme Court and more particularly in paragraph number 30 of the judgment of the Supreme Court rendered in the case of Prem Shankar Sukla, as well as paragraph 16 to 21 of the judgments in the case of Citizens for Democracy. The next issue pertains to as to whether the petitioner is entitled to compensation and if so, to what amount. Then relying on Nilabati Behera. In view of the above, Settled principles law laid down by the Supreme Court, this court is of the considered view that the respondents are liable to compensate the petitioner for handcuffing the petitioner without just cause, which violates the mandate of Article 21 of the Constitution. Now then, now the question arises as what would be the compensation that can be directed to be paid by the respondent authorities? The petitioner had neither specified the amount to which the petitioner would be entitled as compensation nor the petitioner has placed any material to the effect of loss which has been caused to the petitioner on account of handcuffing the petitioner. Be that as it may, the petitioner is an advocate and handcuffing the petitioner and parading him by taking him to the court and thereafter back to the jail with iron fetters, that too without a just cause being shown, not only violates the human rights of the petitioner guaranteed under Article 21 of the Constitution, but also demeans his dignity and prestige to carry out his profession of advocacy. No amount of compensation could be therefore sufficient to restore the loss of prestige and dignity to the petitioner in the present case. Under such circumstances, this court, considering the loss so suffered by the petitioner, and also taking into account that some amount of compensation is required to be imposed upon the respondent authorities as a deterrent, directs the respondent authorities to pay a compensation of rupees 5 lakhs to the petitioner. Within a period of two months from the date a certified copy of this judgment is served upon the Director General of Police, Assam. Then further, <clears throat> this court, before dealing with the facts of the instant case, finds it relevant to observe that in view of the law laid down by the Supreme Court in the case of Sunil Batra, Supra, Prem Sankar, Supra, Supra and as well as the citizens for India, so and so, the same being binding on all concerned have rendered Rule 214 of the Assam Police Manual archaic and it is high time that the state needs to incorporate the principles laid down in the aforesaid three judgments in the Assam Police Manual. Before parting with the record, this court finds it relevant to observe that it is high time that the Assam Police Manual is required to be amended by the authorities concerned, so that principles laid down in the state judgments as are engrafted to the Assam Police Manual. This court believes and expects that the authorities concerned would be very soon take note of the suggestions made herein and do the need. I'm sorry if you applied. In fact, the citizens of democracy judgment has been rendered in the case of State of Assam. 
And not only that, what does in that judgment, very interestingly, one thing has been observed in that judgment. We declare, clearly declare that it shall be obeyed for the Inspector General of Police and the Inspector General of Prisons to the escort constable and the jail wardens that the rule regarding a prisoner in transit is so and so. We mandate the judicial office. Then there is another paragraph. Yes. The law declared by this court in Sukla's case and Batra's case is a mandate under Article 40, 141 and 144 of the Constitution. And all concerned are bound to obey the same. We are constrained to say that the guidelines laid down by the Supreme Court and the directions issued repeatedly regarding handcuffing of under trials and convicts are not being followed by the police, jail authorities and even by the subordinate judiciary. We make it clear that the law laid down by the court in the aforesaid two judgments and the directions issued by us are binding on all concerned, and any violation or circumvention shall attract the provisions of the Contempt of Court Act apart from other penal. So there they involve 220 of the CIPC. That becomes a law under 141. Huh? That becomes a law under 141. Yeah. I'm deep Look, can I go through? Yes, yes. Thank you. 